the mind is a labyrinth, and here we see the collected mind of all mankind. Ascend the ladders of the stacks. Let thy soul light the passage of the maze to find what all do seek, the golden fruit from all these ages. There are secrets hiding in these pages. Here we have a beautiful volume of the lives of the noble Greeks and Romans written by Plutarch. It's old and covered in dust. Perfect. Our reading today will be from the life of Julius Caesar. A quick introduction to the reading. Shortly after the Roman Senate appointed Sulla dictator in 82 BC, Sulla instituted a series of proscriptions a program of executing those whom he perceived as enemies of the state. The life of young Julius Caesar came under threat due to his familial ties to Marius, the seven-time Roman consul who opposed Sulla's capture of Rome. In reference to the young Julius, Sulla proclaimed he, quote, saw more than one Marius in that boy. It was during his evasion of Sulla that Caesar was captured by pirates. We begin our reading from Plutarch here. Caesar, on being informed of his comparison to Marius, concealed himself, and for a considerable time kept out of the way in the country of the Sabines, often changing his quarters, till one night, as he was removing from one house to another on account of his health, he fell into the hands of Sulla's soldiers, who were searching those parts in order to apprehend any who had absconded. Caesar, by a bribe of two talents, prevailed with Cornelius, their captain, to let him go, and was no sooner dismissed, but he put to sea and made for Bithynia. After a short stay there with Nicomedes, the king, in his passage back he was taken near the island of Pharmacusa by some of the pirates who, at that time, with large fleets of ships, and innumerable smaller vessels infested the seas everywhere. When these men at first demanded of him 20 talents for his ransom, he laughed at them for not understanding the value of their prisoner and voluntarily engaged to give them 50. He presently dispatched those about him to several places to raise the money, till at last he was left among a set of the most bloodthirsty people in the world, the Cilicians, only with one friend and two attendants. Yet he thought so little of them that when he wanted to sleep, he would send to them and order them to make no noise. For 38 days, with all the freedom in the world, he amused himself with joining in their exercises and games, as if they had not been his keepers, but his guards. He wrote verses and speeches and made them his listeners, and those who did not admire him he called to their faces illiterate and barbarous, and would often, in raillery, threaten to hang them. They were greatly taken with this, and attributed his free talking to a kind of boyish playfulness. As soon as his ransom came from Miletus, he paid it and was discharged, and proceeded at once to man some ships at the port of Miletus, and went in pursuit of the pirates, whom he surprised with their ships still stationed at the island and took most of them. Their money he made his prize, and the men he secured in prison at Pergamus, and he made application to Junius, who was then the governor of Asia, to whose office it belonged as praetor, to determine their punishment. Junius, having his eye upon the money, for the sum was considerable, said he would think at his leisure what to do with the prisoners, upon which Caesar took his leave from him and went off to Pergamus, where he ordered the pirates to be brought forth and crucified, the punishment he had often threatened them with while he was in their hands, and they little dreamed he was serious.
This is a tale of power, and Caesar just put on a clinic. I hope you were paying attention. Sola comes for Caesar's head. Caesar evades him. He then gets captured by pirates, hangs a large ransom in front of their eyes, then proceeds to do as he pleases on their ship, making fun of them, telling them that he's going to hang them. He pays the pirates, they let him go. He acquires some ships, attacks them, takes back his money, imprisons everybody, and then crucifies them. This is some high-level maneuvering. These pirates never stood a chance. No wonder he was laughing at them. This story can teach us a lot. Let's look at some of the ways Caesar handled this. Number one, he promised and delivered a ridiculous amount of money for his ransom. He laughed at them for their low demands, then he tripled it and quadrupled it. How do you think this changed the pirates' perspective of him? And why would Caesar risk so much money? A simple answer is money can be made back. Once you're dead, you're dead. But more importantly, he knew he was going to get it right back. And by promising such a large ransom at the very beginning, he changed the relationship dynamic between him and the captors. Because they wanted the money so badly, he could basically do whatever he wanted. They were mesmerized by the prize. Now that he was free to do as he pleased on the ship, he had the opportunity to further develop the relationship between him and his captors. He participated in daily activities. He told stories, mesmerizing them with his brilliant oratory. He was even confident enough to make fun of them, becoming one of the boys. In other words, and this is important, he established valuable bonds with them. What do we know about bonds? If we think about it scientifically, the strength of bonds, their durability ranges from extremely brittle and easy to break to very flexible and impossible to break. The phrase for this is elasticity. Think about the difference between a new friend that you make and somebody who's very close to you in your family. Do you value your new friend as much as your mother? Would you sacrifice just as much for your new friend as you would for your dad? How much pain would you be willing to take before you kicked them to the curb? Why do some bonds have more power than others? What makes bonds weak or strong? Important questions. One of the main things that builds strong bonds is the length of a relationship, the duration. But what about in a moment of trouble? Let's say getting captured by pirates. Is it possible to create strong, flexible, and high-value bonds in a very short period of time? Caesar did it. What we're talking about here is how to recognize an opportunity, and then how to capitalize on it. Lord Chesterfield says, Life is the study of characters. Caesar knew the character of these pirates. They're after money, so he used money as a primary tool in his maneuvering. They aren't the smartest people, which gave him confidence that he could successfully orchestrate this plan. That they're probably lonely, spending so much time at sea, and tales of city life told by a nobleman would be captivating. He was the captive, and yet he was captivating. His knowledge of pirates enabled him to play the situation like an instrument. I love this story. It's enlightening. I think in the near future I'll spend some more time exploring it, maybe on a podcast or something. In the meantime, please consider becoming a patron to the channel. I want to start making content like this full time, but I need your help. And as always, you know the mantra. We need new heroes. Torture vices and get to work. You never know when the pirates will capture you.